What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on Sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram, at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night, only on BET. All right, Sisters fans, here we go with yet another video about the... I feel like it's safe to say that the scene between Jasmine breaking into Andy's apartment, probably the cliffhanger ending or the season, yeah, basically the final scene of the season, the season two finale in the shadows. So the question that's been posed to me because I've been getting so many messages over the past couple of days, um, Hey, Jeremy, do you think the scene between Jasmine kind of, you know, breaking into Andy's apartment, Gary seemingly not being there? What if this is just a nightmare that Andy's having? That's honestly a good theory. You know, honest, that's honest. That's what I sound like a broken record. That's honestly, that's honest. That's not, uh, that's why I'm doing this video, because it actually does make sense. But this reminds me of the season one finale of Ruthless when Lilo got his head chopped off by Oliver and people were like, well, I don't know. What if Oliver didn't do it? And it turned out that it was just like, you know, we were seeing what Oliver was thinking, what he wanted to do to Lilo. But eh, no, it turned out that that's actually what happened. I'm thinking the same thing in this case. It would be, I know this sounds weird, but, you know, aside from just seeing Tyler Perry characters being crazy, outlandish, uh, psycho, whatever. I'm more into seeing the psychological breakdown. And I'm not talking about a person's breakdown necessarily, but I mean, seeing what makes a ter person tick, you know, seeing what makes a character, you know, their his or her inner thoughts, dialogue, that kind of thing. It would, it would be interesting if, you know, this whole thing was a dream because it can go into Andy's inner psyche, her subconscious mind, the fact that deep down she knows the dangers of, you know, getting married or being together with Gary and what that entails. So it would just show that, hey, Tyler Perry can visualize for us what a character is going through on the inside instead of always having to one up himself in regards to shootings, explosions, fights, things like that. So, and you know, like a person's mind, it's almost like Phineas and Ferb where Candace has like the, I mean, honestly, I'm guilty of this. Assuming the worst all the time, but then what happens in reality is nowhere near as bad as you thought it would have been. Case in point, I'm recording this at around 6.30 a.m. I had a semi-nightmare. It's kind of weird. I feel like it was more of a dream of confusion than being a straight-up nightmare. It's like, wait a minute. It's like 3 a.m. Wow, okay, I'm up early. Maybe I'll roll around and go to sleep. And then it's like, no, it's not. It's 3 p.m. And I'm like, what the hell? So then I look. And it was like 5 a.m. when I woke up. I'm like, oh, okay. It must have been just weird confusion. Disorientation to ex to an extent. And I feel like the same thing with Andy. It's like, it would make sense for her to have a nightmare like this. I mean, earlier that day, she got jumped in the freaking parking garage at work by this woman that she's having a nightmare about. Who threatened to say, this ain't over. And it's like, yeah, that's some scary shit. This would be very interesting to be a nightmare. But I think it's reality. Also, the fact that... uh. Should I use this in this video or should I talk about it in another video? I'll talk about it in another video because I want to get those views. <laughs> but I really would think that, um, you know, let's say Andy's in bed alone in the nightmare and then Jasmine comes in. She has the gloves. I don't know. She's going to attack her. She's going to strangle her. She's going to pull out a gun. And let's say she pulls out the gun. We hear the gunshot and then she wakes up screaming and then Gary's in bed with her. And that really goes back to that like Carrie Hilson's first big song energy. And it's kind of interesting because her love interest in that video was a Christian keys who, you know, Sonny from, um, Sonny from, uh, Medea goes to jail. And it's like, uh, I have a nightmare. So I'm sleeping with the enemy. This love is taking all of my energy. I feel like if there was, you know, aside from copyright reasons, I think this song would perf uh, perfectly identify with Andy and her relationship with, um, um, Gary, that's what I think. Seriously, look up the lyrics or just look at the music video. Carrie Hilson energy. Listen to the lyrics carefully and just in hell, look at the music video too. And you'll see that this truly identifies with Andy's love life. Wow. 
See, I like doing videos like this as opposed to trying to predict everything that happens when I'm doing these character analysis. So I really do think that deep down, Andy's afraid. It's just that she won't admit it because I was looking, and I'm, I'm not trying to get off topic here, but I really do think it's very interesting to look at it from this perspective. I forgot what video because I've absorbed so many videos about the whole Derek Jackson scandal thing. Like I, the only time I knew of this guy, I've only... I remember when, uh, what was it, Pastor John Gray was exposed for cheating on his wife, and I looked at a Derek Jackson video about it, because I actually heard John Gray preach at a, a choir, the fire, that was a Christian conference in Pennsylvania, I went up to uh, the conference with a couple buddies of mine in college on the same dorm, uh, one of them happened to live in Pennsylvania, so he went up there for a couple of days, and he was a great preacher, I love the sermon, funny as well. So, you know, when the scandal broke, I was like, okay, okay, let me look into this, see what's going on. And I saw Derek Jackson's video about it. And it, basically to the point, I was watching a Derek Jackson related video today and somebody was, you know, giving their thoughts on the scandal. And they were like, um, he's going to have fans no matter what, because not just Derek Jackson, but whatever be political entertainment wise, whatever, more people would blindly follow someone then admit that they're, they were stupid. They'll admit that they've been played. They'll stick to their guns, no pun intended, and just stay with the person they, or the thing they've been committed to. That defines Andy in so many ways. How many people, how many ways, how many times does she need to hear, Gary ain't a good match for you, Andy. He's going to hurt you. He's a married man. you got other potential candidates that you're just walking all over in order to get to him and she just sits there just so bubbly and airheaded but beautiful and she's just like you all don't see him the way i see him i see him at his best you all see him at his worst and then they're like well this is a man who would stay with you at night and go home to his wife and kids during the day you don't know gary as well as you think you do and it's like, if you look at the track record, I feel like this, I feel like the Andy and Gary relationship, it is crippled by Tyler Perry's writing. What I mean by that is his tendency to outdo himself. What I mean by is just raising the stakes. It's like, what person in their right mind would stay with somebody after the FBI shows up, after the ex-wife shows up multiple times to threaten, harass you, and, you know, beat you down the parking lot with her girls. It's like, there's, and I'm not going to use the word stupid because, you know, there are real people out there, probably some people on this channel who have been in relationships, Stockholm Syndrome, like Beauty and the Beast, or, you know, th they, or even not even to a violent extent, but it's like, you've been with somebody, man, woman, whatever. I'm talking to everybody right now. You've been with somebody who you know is no good for you. You've uh, walked away from other partners who could have been a much better fit, but you decided it's almost like an investment. It's like, you know what? I spent so much time working on this person and being with them. I'm not going to throw it away. Nothing's going to get in my way. Not a baby mama, not a wife, not a husband, not their family, not my family, not his friends, not my friends. No, I've put too much time, too much effort, too much emotion to walk away from this now. And more like to the Andy standards, hey, I need I feel like I've been I need to play catch up. I should have been married by now, should have had a family, blah, blah, blah. It's like, do you even I don't even think Andy is convincing herself as to this is the right relationship to her. I just feel like she's too stubborn to admit she's wrong. Like um for another video I'm about to record, I had to look at not full episodes, but a couple of scenes from mid season one. So I think around episodes 11, 12 and 13 to get a character name and a couple of screenshots and just Andy. It's so, it's so stupid after, um, uh, Leslie exposed Gary seeing other women and all, which is something, honestly, we never got follow up on because remember Leslie gave her a file folder with a ton of photos. Sure. There was the one photo at the airport and even Danny was at the airport and saw that Gary was there with somebody else, but it turned out that was his sister-in-law. But there were other photos where it looked like he was with white women and a couple other black women. Like, that's never been addressed. It's weird. And not to mention when Leslie and Jasmine go to um, Andy's office to confront her, the one where Jasmine's wearing that tight red dress. Mm -mm -mm. 
I think that was episode 13 or 14. It was confirmed that Jasmine has confronted other women. So, and I'm not just talking about the ones Leslie encounter, um, you know, brought up by mistake. No, there were legitimately other women that Gary was with. Did we just forget that storyline element? That's pretty crucial. So what I'm saying is that I honestly feel that deep down, Andy's afraid. She just doesn't want, she doesn't want to admit she's afraid. She doesn't want to admit she's wrong. And I do think she's sleeping with the enemy. So I love the idea of Andy having a nightmare about Jasmine breaking into an apartment, her apartment. But I think it is reality. It would be very interesting if it was left open-ended where, like I said before, um, she pulls the trigger on the gun and then that's the end of the uh, episode. And it's like, oh shit, what happened? And then we get to the beginning of season three and it turns out to be a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. I would love that. I think that's a lot better than the haves and the have-nots where we saw Wyatt shooting his parents, but then it's like, no, he shot he shot his father, but he shot at Catherine, but he didn't shoot her. And then, you know, because some people were like, and I even jumped on this train. I wouldn't have been surprised if we opened up the next season. What, season six, I think. I forgot what number it was. Basically, you know, when Wyatt went around and shot his parents, and then the police shot him. It was like, um, he was on these drugs by RK. And it was like, hey, man, you brought me even less than last time. And it's like, you got a problem. And it's like, well, probably RK gave him less of the amount of drugs in the bag, but it was a more potent amount of, I mean, it was a more potent type of drug. So what if he took those drugs and he was having this mass hallucination about shooting his parents and then the beginning of next season, he woke up, but no, um, we get half-assed excuses. I mean, the quail bullets make sense, but him shooting at Catherine at the wall, but no impact made no sense. So I think that if Andy, quote unquote, gets shot or killed in the finale by Jasmine, but then she wakes up at the beginning of season three and it turns out to be a dream. That would be freaking amazing. I would love that. So that's all I have for this particular video. I did not expect it to go on as long as it did. I, I can't even remember if I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so I'll do it here. Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, click the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post new content to the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. Hit the subscribe button, especially if you are a frequent viewer, but you haven't actually hit subscribe. If you've been a long time viewer, thank you so much, but please double check to make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube, for whatever reason, has been unsubscribing people from various channels on the platform. So again, just double check to make sure you're still subscribed. If you aren't, just hit subscribe, it'll fix the problem. And if you would love to donate to the channel, which I'd really appreciate as you know, yeah, uh, three months from today, is the end of my lease so got to get this money together for the house so if you want to donate feel free to do so on paypal or cash app thanks so much for tuning in and i'll talk to you soon